right, good morning. I have the pleasure of breaking down our last message from Discipleship 101, Season 5, Episode 9, which is titled, How to Confidently Share Jesus. Pastor John began this message by bringing to mind several truths that we know. We know there are two sides of the gospel, the gospel of Christ and the gospel of the kingdom. We know that those who are unsaved and do not have a covenant with God must hear the gospel of Christ. We know our testimony can open the door to the gospel, but must rest upon an authentic life witness. And we know the truth about how we can be positioned to receive salvation. Now, that last, um, that last one is revealed in John 1, 12 through 13, which reads, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Once this foundation of truths was laid, Pastor transitioned into a breakdown of the three influences in one salvation. The first and most important is God's part. John 6 verse 44 states, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. The takeaway from this scripture is that no one can make a decision for Christ using their own volition. We can only respond to, the, to God when he is already drawing us to Christ. Building off of this truth, pastor transitioned into explaining the recipient's part in their salvation. Romans 10, 8 through 10 verse, and verse 13 reads, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pastor pointed out that the latter half of this passage contains some of the most misquoted words in scripture. People often preach that if you say this, you are saved. But Paul preached, if you say this, you will be. Pastor pointed out that shall be and will be are synonymous. Salvation is the gift of God and not man. It starts with God. The recipient's part is to call on the name of the Lord out of a believing heart, trusting that they are now positioned to be saved by God. You don't receive him just because of what you say. It positions you as one who now believes in the name of the Lord to receive him. This brings us to the third influence, which is our part the witness's part in the salvation experience. Pastor provided us with key questions that we must answer. How can we share unless we are sent? How can they hear unless we tell them? How can they believe the gospel and receive Christ if they have not heard the gospel? How can they call on him if they have not believed the gospel of Christ? That's where we come in. Pastor stated that every conversion starts with a conversation. And he provided us with five faith-revealing questions that we can use to have a conversation. These five faith-revealing questions have been adapted from Share Jesus Without Fear by William Fay. Question number one, do you have any kind of spiritual belief? Now, no matter what they say, our answer is okay. We do not debate. To you, who is Jesus? If they give you an answer that reveals that they know him, 
find out about their relationship with him. No, there is a difference between knowing about him and knowing him intimately. Do you believe there is a heaven and a hell? If you died right now, where would you go? Regardless of their answer to this question, we inquire why. If what you believe were not true, would you know it? Now, if the Lord is at work in their heart, they're going to say yes. If they say yes and give you permission to land, then land. If not, then you don't want to try to land where the Holy Spirit is not working. This landing process looks like the following. We share the gospel. We share our testimony, share the gospel, offer to pray with them and for them, instruct them to keep praying until something changes, and follow up with them, praying with them and for them. Pastor reminded us of five things to be before we have these conversations. We are to be prayerful, mission-minded, ready to give an answer, authentic, and friendly. Pastor closed things out with a prayer that I'd like to share. Father, thank you for equipping us to share Jesus confidently. You have called us to make disciples of others, and today you have equipped us to fulfill our calling. Thank you for simplifying your word, showing us how we can obey your great commission by reaching those we love. This has been the breakdown of Discipleship 101, Season 5, Episode 9, titled, How to Confidently Share the Gospel. Let's welcome back Pastor John. Join me, if you would, in Mark chapter 16. We're going to look at verses 15 and 16, which is Mark's version of the Great Commission. And it reads, And he, Yeshua, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not will be condemned. Welcome to Discipleship 101, Season 5, Episode 10. I'm feeling a little emotional. (laughs) About to finish up with my girl here. Back to Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. I want you to really focus on the words that appear in the middle of verse 16. He says, go out, preach the gospel to every creature. And then he says... He who believes and is baptized will be saved. There's your will be again. They will be saved. So it's okay for us to baptize believers trusting that at some point they are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and saved. So when someone gives us a profession of faith, We can baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, anticipating that because they believe and are baptized, that they will be saved. Everybody see that? The second thing he says, though, is baffling. Because you get so excited about the first part, you miss the second part. And then he says, but he who does not believe. (laughs) What? Why are we talking about them? Everybody's going to believe. Once they hear the gospel I'm sharing, once they hear my testimony, they're going to get saved. Now, he makes provision, and we ought to make provision, that some who hear the gospel, like the rich young ruler, will walk away sad. They may not be sad in that moment, But at some point in their life, if they haven't received the gospel, 
They're going to be sad. Some will walk. There were those. Christ preached his gospel and some heard it. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part in me. And they heard it and they walked away from him. They walked away from him. And you think your testimony is so <laughs> magnetic? <laughs> Wait till they hear what I went through. They walked away from the master and to keep from getting a complex, he turned around to his boys and he said, y'all going to leave me too? Peter said, where should we go? You got the words of life. He said, that's what I thought they would say. And they walked away. So we got to know some will walk away. Before you start sharing your testimony, you need to know that some will walk away. So that brings me to the hard reality. Is it some will, some won't just deliver the mail. Don't stand at the door grinning, <laughs> waiting for people to open the mail and read it and rejoice in their hearts that you have been so faithful to deliver them the gospel. They may not even want to hear it. They may hear your testimony and be like, bah humbug. They may not be impressed. But if you're on the line, now one good rejection and you shut down your whole discipleship thing. But you got your feelings hurt trying to get somebody saved. God saves people witness. Let me say it over here. God saves people witness. We don't save anybody. All we get to do is deliver the mail. Look with me in Matthew chapter 10. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 through 15. Reading from the New King James yeah, uh, Yeshua modified. The scripture says, These twelve Yeshua sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go in the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, Remember, I told you what his message was, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The interchangeable with the kingdom of God. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts nor bag for your, for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staff, for a worker is worthy of his food. As you go out and serve, the people you serve will provide your needs. You don't have to go looking out for you. I need you to go looking out for them. Verse 11. Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy. And stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So we go back in and we focus this time on Matthew verses, uh, chapter 10, verses 7 and 8. Just going to pull those two out and take a look. And I want you to make note what it says. And as you go preach, and as you go share the gospel, wherever you go, Share the gospel, saying, 
The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is accessible. You don't have to live the way you're living. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. This is what I want you to get. Freely you have received. Therefore what? Therefore what? Shout it out. Therefore what? And that brings us to our message for today. Our subject today, as we conclude this series, is freely you have received. Salvation is the gift of God. Not of works. No one can boast. There's nobody here who worked for their salvation. Everybody here, if you received it, got it out of the goodness and grace of God. Anybody grateful to be saved today? It's the gift of God. I want to talk to you today about the fact that you have freely received and how that ought to produce two convictions in your heart concerning sharing what you freely receive. You know, it's like you give me, you know, some free patties. I say I want to have a cookout, and you say I got a box of patties in the freezer I haven't used, and you give me the box of patties, and I take them home, and I put them on the grill, and then I sell each burger for two bucks. Something right about my heart. That's all I'm going to say. Somebody need to pray because something's not right about my heart that I would take what I received as a free gift and now make other people work for it. So we got to be careful as we go out sharing the gospel that we don't take what we receive for free and now put a price on it and require people to pay the price before they get the gift. Two foci that I have for today's message. I want to talk to you, the two foci that I have for today's message, and I want to talk to you about each of them. Focus number one comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8, particularly verse 8. At the end of verse 8, Yeshua says, freely you have received, therefore, what? Freely give. Focus number one, freely give. Somebody say freely give. Okay? That's focus number one of the two foci. Focus number two, we find at the end of the second part of the passage, Matthew 10, verses 13 and 14 in particular, verses four, verse 14, where he says, And whoever does not receive you nor hear your words, he says, leave, and when you do, what do you do? Shake off the dust from your feet. Somebody say, shake it off. If you can't kick your foot a little bit, just say, shake it off. Just kick it off. Shake it off. So the foci for today is freely give and shake it off. Somebody say that with me. Freely give and shake it off. If you're going to share the gospel, if you're going to share your testimony, we must learn to freely give and when they don't want what you've prepared, shake it off. Don't get offended. Don't get in your feelings. Don't start judging them. See, that's why so many people are going to hell. No, don't. Put your little finger away. You never were living right. Put your little finger away. Freely give. And whatever they do with it, shake it off. It's not about us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I want to work with you through Focus One. What does it mean to give freely when sharing the gospel of Christ? 
I would suggest to you that it means at least seven things. And I want to tell you what those seven things are that it could mean to freely share the gospel of Christ. Giving freely means the recipient does not need to qualify to receive. They don't need to stop doing what they're doing. They don't need to get themselves together. They don't need to clean up their language. They don't need to cut it off. They don't need to get out the bed. They don't have to do they don't have to do any of that. They don't have to stop inhaling, stop liquefying cut, satisfying their palate. They don't have to stop. They don't have to give none of that. They don't have to stop that. They just need to be open to receive. Number 2. Giving freely means offering the gospel with no obligation to receive. Can I tell you about my relationship with Christ? Well, I'm really not interested. Now, you see your coworker coming, you don't want to go down that hallway. Because they didn't want to, you invite them to your church, they don't want to go, and now you feel some kind of way. Why were you on the line? Why was it an obligation? Why was it not an opportunity? Why would there, was there a hook on the end of your love? Giving freely means the one sharing has nothing to prove. You're not trying to impress them with your knowledge of Scripture. You're not trying to impress them with your knowledge of God. You're not trying to give a slick presentation so you can walk. I nailed that one. Mm, mm, gospel. You're in the bathroom talking about, that's how you do the gospel. Hanging from the rim. Somebody walk in, you're doing this. So, da, 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 da. Because you're in there patting yourself on the back for good witness. You have nothing to prove. It's not about you. Number four, giving freely means your only objective is to give them legitimate choice. You know, on some level, I hope everybody gets saved, but really, it's up to you what you do when I tell you. Everybody knows that it's good to drink water. And most of us sitting right here right now probably should drink more. If you're here right now and you know you should probably drink more water, just wave at me. You know you probably should drink more water than you do, but you'd rather get a soda than a water. You don't need a commercial to tell you to drink more water. And I'm not going to be at your house with a six-pack <laughs> of Deer Park Banging on the door. Is that the pastor? You didn't drink more water. I'm burdened in my spirit. I can't hardly drink. And God sent Noah and he had a flood of water. No, go on home, pastor. Go on home. Sister Andrea is looking for you. You and your water go on home. Too much. So when you share the gospel with somebody... And you, you said, I told you, I, I kind of secretly wanted to be there when our children came to Christ. I wanted to be there speaking in tongues, you know, oil just dripping all down John's forehead. He laid out in the living room, speaking out, yes, this is the moment. Elijah and Elisha, receive, receive. When I saw him, he was just saying, I was like, when that happened? Lord, you know, I thought I was your friend. He said, yeah, but you got a pride problem. <laughs> you try to make it about you. The only objective is to give them legitimate choice. I'm never sitting around trying to make, you know, Andrea and I are talk, always talking about our parenting, our parenting style. There's a little different. But I really believe in giving people legitimate choice. And it really doesn't bother me if you decide destroy, to destroy your own life. <laughs> it really doesn't. Because my life, I'm trying to master life. 
I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> but, you know, if you decide you want to mess your life up and turn it into nothing and be sitting around on the corner talking about, can you, got, you got some juice? You can do that. I'm not sure I'm going to give you any change when I pass by, but somebody got you covered. I don't even keep the change. So somebody got you covered. You can do that. I just want you to have legitimate choice. You know, Ania, did you do your homework? Sweetheart, I'll say, Remember. It's very important that you do well this year because your eighth grade year is going to set up your high school. And if you're going to go in a field where a college degree is required, you, it, you're going to have great advantages if you do well from now until the time you graduate. But the choice is yours. I'm not going to sit with her and turn the page and take her hand and make her write 412 divided by, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I want to give her legitimate choice. <laughs> seem half the time, speaking of that, half the time seemed like she on, sitting over there doodling, not doing the work. I don't know what's going on. She and Andrew going back and forth. And then her grades come out. I said, how you do? She said, I got all A's and B's. I'm like, oh, listen, I'm out of that business. <laughs> I'm out of that business. I'm just giving you legitimate choice. You have to do with it what you want. If you're not careful, you will get into people's outcomes instead of their choices. If you don't offer me anything but pink, I've got to eat it or starve. But if you give me a healthier option, uh, I'm sorry for the pig lovers. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> go have your slice of ham when you get home. But for, for the rest, okay, if you don't offer me anything but that, I have no what? Option. I have no choice. The only thing we're after is to give people legitimate choice. Number five, giving freely means you share without manipulation. That means you don't have to scare people that they're going to hell. Do you know <laughs> half the people in church are saved today because they didn't want to go to hell? Like, oh, I don't even know if they're saved. They came to the altar because they didn't want to go to hell. And the preacher told them, I've heard preachers say, if you don't stop doing that, you run around, shacking up, Cussing and drinking, you're going to wake up and find yourself in hell. Is that how you get there? <laughs> Is that how you get there? I don't think that's what the Bible said. I think he said, those who reject me shall be condemned. I don't think he said that you, you, you was doing, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think you go to hell for your behavior. You go to hell based on not having a right relationship with Christ. Otherwise, it's called self-righteousness. You got good enough to earn your salvation. Everybody else got the gift of God, but not you. You got the wages of goodness. Da -da -da -da! You're the only one in heaven deserving to be there. You're the first one going out. <laughs> Lucifer going to be like, I'll catch him when you throw him. I'll catch him. I will catch him. Number six. The conversation, giving freely means the conversation is between the person and the Lord, not you. You're just the tool being used. You're just the mouthpiece. If they're not rejecting you, he said, if anyone rejects this, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me, for this is the will of God. So why am I on the line if it's not even my gospel? Last I checked, it's the gospel of Christ, not the gospel of John. <laughs> no offense to the gospel of John, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying. Number seven, giving freely means there is no sense of performance, only faithfulness. There's no sense of you working on your testimony.
to try to get it good. There's none of that. It's just you being faithful to God's call to be his witness. Anybody receive those words today? <laughs> Praise our God. So back to Matthew chapter 10, and we're now going to look at the backside and look at verse 14 where it said, And whoever does not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart the house, first of all, keep it stepping, shake off the dust from your feet. Our foci is freely give and shake it off. Focus number two, what does it mean to shake it off when someone is unreceptive of the gospel? It means five things. Number one, Shaking it off means I continue to love the person as though nothing has happened. Nothing has changed. One day at lunch, I decide I'm going to share the gospel with my coworker. They say they don't want to hear it. I'll go to lunch with them the next week. I continue to love them. I'm not doing anything. They, don't, they are not on my bad list. I'm not avoiding them. I'm not making up reasons not to sit next to them in the meeting. Number two. I continue to pray for the Lord to soften their heart. It's possible. <laughs> if water drips on rock for a thousand years, it will make a canyon. You don't know which drip you are. And some of us stop praying when the person stops, when the person doesn't receive, as if that had to be the final drip. Just keep praying. Uh, William Fay, in Share Jesus Without Fear, came back and said that he remembered every person who ever witnessed to him. They may come back to you. The first time Andrea tried to share the gospel with me, it was not a successful landing. You talk about permission to land. It was not a successful landing. Her plane was coming in all wobbly. I was moving the runway. <laughs> She's like, hold still. Hold still. I was like, you ain't going to land on me. It took a little while for me to settle down and say, tell me about the Lord. I was not a good hearer. And yet, every time she tried, it made a difference. It softened my heart just a little bit that she hadn't given up on me. Number three, shaking it off means I continue to make myself available as a spiritual resource. I don't cut them off. They may come back to me and have questions I continue to be a light in darkness for them. Number four. I don't push them to swallow what they have not eaten. Sometimes we don't even notice that people haven't eaten. And we just keep on pushing. And let me tell you another name for him. Jehovah Jireh. And I call him that because... Oh, are you listening to me? No! No, I'm not listening. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, I'm not hearing what you're saying. I don't need Jehovah, whatever you're saying. I haven't even gotten past Jesus. I haven't, shoot, I haven't eaten and you're trying to force me to swallow. Let me give you an indication that I'm receiving what you're serving. Number five, shaking it off means I trust God ultimately for his will to be done. No man comes to the Father unless the one who sent me draws him. So if you're sharing with them and they are able to resist, maybe he's not drawing them fully to himself yet. Trust God for his will to be done. Again, what is our foci? Well, let me put them all up. Here's the five. You can see the five. And then our foci is freely give and shake it off. Now, as I close the message today, I just want to 
look back to help us give it freely and shake it off. What are some of the key takeaways from this season of messages? Key takeaway number one. Once we know what the gospel of Christ is and begin sharing it freely with others, we will discover just how easy it is to pass on the good news about Jesus Christ. What is God's five-step plan for humanity? Become a Christ carrier, live as a disciple, show your faith through your lifestyle, care about what is important to God, and share your testimony and the gospel. What are five ways each of us can strengthen KLC? We can pray consistently for those who are unsaved. We can invite disconnected believers to join us. We can help younger believers grow in Christ. We can share our testimony and the gospel with others, and we can serve in a ministry. And despite what I said earlier about the ham eaters, we remember that we can be pigs for Christ. We can pray, we can invite, we can grow, we can share, and we can serve. Key takeaway, the only pure motivation for sharing the gospel with others is love. We do it because we love God first and secondarily because we also love them. We never want to go where the Holy Spirit has not been at work. When he turns someone into a seeker, it's easy to step into that process. If they are not responsive, they may not be ready to, they not, may not really be a seeker yet. Our job is not to push our faith on others, not to argue with those who do not believe, and not to wear people down. We're here to help the seeking find Christ. We must give unsaved people what they need and not what we want them to have. They do not need our faith. It's too subjective and prejudicial. What unbelievers need is three things. They need our testimony. They need the gospel of Christ. And they need evidence of our changed life. So the elements of effective witnessing are personal testimony plus the gospel of Christ resting on a clearly exchanged life. The best practice for sharing one's testimony or the gospel of Christ is to wait for permission to land. Some clear indication from the person that they are interested or open to receiving what we have. Every conversion begins with a conversation. If we're not engaging others about more than surface issues, news, sports, weather, we will not find opportunities to obey the Great Commission. From William Fay's book, Share Jesus Without Fear, we saw there are five faith-revealing questions that you can insert in any conversation with someone that you care about. Do you have any kind of spiritual belief? To you... Who is Jesus? Do you believe there's a heaven or hell? If you died right now, where would you go? If what you believe were not true, would you want to know it? Five things we have to be before we have a conversation is prayerful, mission-minded, ready to give an answer, authentic, no representative allowed, and friendly. And finally, God has called each of us to be disciples who help to make other disciples. After all of this teaching, there's only one question. You can no longer say, we don't know. The question you have now been left with is, will you obey him or resist? And that is your legitimate choice. Would you stand with me and let's pray and thank God, not only for this message, but for this series. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for each message and season of this series. Thank you for making your words so plain to us. We can no longer plead ignorance, saying we have not heard what you want us to be and to do for your glory. Help us, Lord, to fully live the life you have called us to live. Lord God, thank you for putting on my heart Discipleship 101. 
I had no idea when we started that we would be in this 50 weeks over five seasons. But you have equipped us, Lord. You have equipped us to understand what a disciple is, how to grow up through the normal life cycle of a Christ carrier, and how to lead someone else into the life of being a disciple, making disciple maker. We are fully equipped. And we thank you for that. Now, Lord, we pray that as we go out, that which we have heard would fall on good ground and grow up, that the rest of our natural days would be spent sharing our witness and the gospel with others as they look over and see our exchange life. That many would come into the kingdom because of our deep love for you. Father, we've got the hots for you. We have heard. Now help us obey and trust and submit. We thank you for this and for all of this. In the name of Yeshua, who is the Christ, we do pray. Let the believing church say amen, amen, and amen. If today was for you, come on and praise God with me. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Thank you for tuning in to another life-changing message from Kingdom Life Community. If today's message blessed you, please like, comment, and subscribe. But most importantly, share. Share this message with your family, friends, coworkers, or anyone else you think needs to hear this word. You never know how it will impact them. We pray that you have a blessed week and remember to live the kingdom life. We'll see you soon.